Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today. I am your host, Jason Salzman, here in the Muskogee Media Studios, getting ready for this week's episode and a lot to get to, a lot to talk about. You know, if you've watched the news this week, you've been up to date and up to speed on all that's going on, you know that President Donald Trump gave the State of the Union Address. Maybe not a lot of people out there know this. But the Muscogee Creek Nation in its constitution calls for every year the principal chief to give a state of the nation address. It's to be done at the last council meeting of the first of the year. And this past weekend, the state of the nation address was given by the principal chief, James Floyd. We will have you that nearly in its entirety. We had to, uh, of course, uh, take a few liberties to cut some, some things for time, but most of it is available. Uh, and, uh, and we will have that for you here today, the state of the nation address from principal chief. Chief James Floyd talking about the state of our nation. Also, something uh, to think about as well, the National Congress of American Indians has a State of Indian Nations address, and that's going to be coming up, I think, in the next week. Uh, and if you uh, just go online, State of the Indian Nations address, you can see that, and you can watch it online as well. Uh, in fact, one of our Oklahoma leaders of the Chickasaw Nation there, Jefferson Kill, actually gives that speech. So, uh, lots of things to get to, lots of great things to talk about out there uh, going on, as well as a deadline on the Cobell settlements. Uh, we will have a little bit on that from our realty department as well this week. So a little bit of news mixed in with some government and also a, a little human interest uh, feature piece to close you out here today for this week's episode. So lots of great things to get to. So glad you're joining us here on Tulsa CW 1219. We'll be right back with after this break. And as I said before the break, uh, the, our, our lead feature this week is the State of the Nation Address given by Principal Chief James Floyd uh, before the quarterly session of the National Council. Uh, it calls for it in the Creek Constitution. Uh, every chief since then has given each year uh, a State of the Nation Address. And uh, Chief Floyd this year, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went and visited with him for a year-end uh, conversation. You saw that here on Native News Today. It's still available on our YouTube channel. Uh, but afterwards, we got a chance to chat, and I asked him about his State of the Nation address. I said, you know, Chief, uh, you got that ready? Everything uh, looking good there? He said, yes, uh, we're going to do it a little differently this year, and I think a lot of people will really uh, appreciate it uh, because uh, it takes a little bit out of the just basically regurgitating numbers and talking about the real effect on real citizens. So uh, I think you'll see that as the uh, speech goes on. So here is Principal Chief James Floyd giving the State of the Nation address. In his 1962 State of the Union Address, President John F. Kennedy said, the Constitution makes us not rivals for power, but partners for progress. It is my task, he said, to report the State of the Union. To improve it is the task of us all. As your principal chief, it is my task to deliver the State of the Nation Address for, of our Muskogee Creek Nation. In the first two years of our administration, our dedicated cabinet members, employees, have been willing to be our partners for progress. As we took on the task to make changes in our policies, procedures, 
and expectations to better serve our citizens. They've been up to the task of doing the hard work, making the hard choices, and putting in extra effort, and the results are great. Together, we can say with renewed confidence that the state of our nation is very strong and that we have put into place plans to help it to continue to grow even stronger. I have the task to keep my campaign promises to you. As you re may remember, one of the themes that this administration adopted is it's all about the people. I could easily quote our progress in numbers and figures, as I generally do each quarter from the, from the published report to our National Council. However, more importantly, since it's about the people, I will highlight some of the accomplishments of our citizens with the support of our administration. <clears throat> I want to tell you about a single mother of four who worked, for our, our, worked in our tribal roads crew as a flagger. She started her job supported by employment and training program just to make ends meet. But Kara wanted something more, so she enrolled in truck driving school which was paid for by education and training, while she continued to work. She graduated at the top of her class. Now, Kara works for Our Nation, operating a dump truck, the only female in a male-dominated field, and she loves it. Kara <laughs> Alexander, if you are here today, would you please stand up? We'd like to acknowledge you and your family. We want to thank you for utilizing the Muskogee Creek Nation to its fullest. I also want to thank and have stand our education and training staff and the Roads and Tourism and Transportation Department for being great partners for CARES Progress. So if you're here today, could you stand? <clears throat> Many of you are familiar with the Ufala Dormitory. It has been around since 1848. Children in grades 1 through 12 live there during the week and attend Eufaula Public Schools with the structure and academic support from the staff at the dorm. Last year, 100% of our seniors graduated. The latest graduating class included three best friends, Jack Aslick, Cordell Burris, and Abraham Williams. All three became very close friends through the years, but somewhere along the way, Cordell began to struggle. He lagged behind in credits and became an at-risk student that meant graduation with his friends would be nearly impossible. Through much guidance from his dorm counselors and his buddies, Cordell enrolled in the Eufaula Alternative Education Program and last May, all three graduated together and on time. Jack and Cordell were awarded more than $80,000 from the Muskogee Scholarship Foundation and other public and private scholarships. I mention that because not every day a student is awarded that much. Today, Jack, who is Eufaula Senior Class President, is enrolled at OSUIT. Abraham is at Haskell Indian Nations University, and Cordell is still exploring his options. Let's recognize and give these three men some encouragement, and also thank the Ufala Dormitory staff and Cordell's teacher, Ms. Leslie Turner, and have them stand for being great partners in the progress of these and many other students. Would you please stand? The past two years brought focus and improvement to the Muskogee Creek Nation Department of Health and the health care budget. I am pleased to say we were able to restructure the Eufaula Clinic and Creek Nation Community Hospital loan to a lower interest rate while dropping the balloon payment. We have paid 
$20 million of that loan by operating our facilities more efficiently. We have drastically reduced the clinic no-show rate cancellations by half, which in turn increased our capacity to see more patients by more than 24,000 visits per year. We've also increased our third-party resources through improved enrollment and identification of private insurance. Our facilities have implemented electronic medical records and an updated phone system that allows all locations to communicate using just a four-digit extension. By renegotiating the health department phone costs, we were able to cover the costs of the new phone system while reducing our monthly phone bill by $50,000 per month. We are proud of the work of the innovative, innovative work of these partners in our progress, some who have dedicated many years to serving our citizens, such as Brenda Lowe, 36 years, Shirley, Beal, Shirley Bean, 32 years, and Shelley Hagee, 33 years. Now, they can finish their careers working in the new $55 million facility in Okima that opened last month. So please join me in recognizing those who work for our health department and those who are here today. Would you please stand? <laughs> Many of our citizens do not have health insurance. Such is the case of Don Tiger. He had been experiencing serious health care issues and was not completely sure if he had health insurance or benefits. An employee, Amy Eden, from the Muscogee Creek Nation Department of Health, worked with Don, and with his approval, she researched his health care coverage. She was able to verify that he was enrolled in Medicare and Medicaid. Ms. Eden also ordered a new Medicare card for Mr. Tiger and provided him with a list of his health care benefits. The greatest thing about this story is we have living proof that Don is alive and well. Not long ago, he was suffering from congestive heart failure and couldn't walk. Today, he spends his time singing Creek hymns every Thursday night and fiddle dancing when possible. With much prayer and great care from our health department staff, Don is worry-free now. It is great to see our elders enjoying life. They are our link to our past and our partners as we progress. Our seniors are the carriers of our traditions, culture, and language. If we lose them, we lose our identity. Another story, this past year, we added two language teachers. Sounds like a small number, but the results were significant. Today, they are seen in our classroom of our Head Start programs, teaching the Muscogee language to our young, as well as our older generation. This past October, the Greater Tulsa Area Indian Affairs Commission awarded the Perry Onco Indigenous Language Preservation Award to the Muscogee Creek Nation program language program. So I want to say great job. If you're with the language program, would you please stand so we can recognize you. I can report today that our council house restoration is complete. From the time the first cornerstone was laid in 1868, the council house was designed and intended, intended to be a sacred meeting place for our people. The council house was taken from the nation at Oklahoma statehood and served many functions before the nation repurchased it. It was in disrepair and we had no plan to restore it. The road to restoration wasn't easy. The cost exceeded the national council's appropriation. Instead of returning to the council for additional funds, we used innovative ways to make up the difference. Our partner, One Fire Holding Company, secured more than 1.5 million in historic tax credits for the project and finished the project on time and on budget. We utilized the Muscogee Creek Nation-owned company, Council Oak Design, Engineering, and Construction, 
who selected native vendors to bring back this important place to our people. The focal point of downtown Okmulgee, our beloved council house, was built and rebuilt by our people. Now the Muscogee Nation Cultural Center and Archives Department will complete the interior and prepare to welcome you. This year, we will be able to hold meetings at the Council House, in the House of Warriors, and in the Council House. We will also live stream current day National Council meetings so that the public can see our government in action. I'd like for all of our partners in our progress involved in the Council House to please stand and be recognized. Not here. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Today, I highlighted some successes in the first two years of our administration. To complete our promises to you, we must do more. We must elevate the nation even higher. In the National Council's agenda this morning is legislation of great importance. It's of great importance to our future. We have developed and submitted for their consideration a master plan to guide decisions for our future growth and economic development in government, for development of venues, to showcase our culture, and for recreation. The master plan is a transformation of the nation's land and its properties within the Okmulgee area for both long and short-term projects. The master plan redesigns the use of our industrial site property for immediate economic development. It provides for additions to the Omniplex, including an indoor event center. It includes a 40-acre parcel of land for cemeteries for our veterans and, and citizens. We will soon begin the design of the Citizen Cemetery, which will meet our burial needs for our citizens for the next 100 years. We recognize our responsibility to guide the future of our nation by being deliberate in our planning to increase our business capability, preserve our traditions and culture, while providing, providing an enhanced environment for our festival and year-round use of Omniplex grounds. With input from hundreds of people, we believe we have gained vital insight and direction to become more successful. <clears throat> Our task going forward is to continue to work on your behalf. We look forward to continued partnership with the National Council. We are grateful for their support of this administration. We recognize in governing, we may not always agree, but we will always be respectful of each branch of our government and their roles. Future progress will be filled with much hard work. As President Kennedy said, to improve it is the task of all of us. Our ancestors continually rose to the task they faced. Wars, loss of the homeland, forced removal, broken treaties, their lives were filled with challenges, but they always found a way to succeed when faced with constant change. They were resilient because they held on to their common purpose and were able to accomplish the task required of them they would expect the same from us. I look forward to the new year with great optimism to next January, when I again will have the most pleasant task to report on our continued success. So I ask, may the Creator continue to bless our country, our state, our great Muscogee Nation, and all of our Muscogee citizens. Mado. And our thanks once again, uh, Principal Chief James Floyd, uh, giving a great State of the Nation address there and, uh, and talking about uh, what it means for the people, different parts of the nation uh, doing good, thriving, uh, and, and, and more to work on as well. I think really uh, looking at what we can do better and uh, improving in, in the next couple years of his administration. I know that that's what the focus will be on uh, from the people over in the executive building. Uh, as we move along, uh, you know, another big
big piece of news came out uh, from the tribe as a press release uh, out about an extension on the deadline for claims on the Cobell settlement. Now, a lot of people out there may not know about the Cobell settlement. And long, long and short of it is, it's one of the largest class action lawsuits ever brought forth against the United States government. It was brought forth against the Department of the Interior and Treasury and was awarded, I believe, $3.4 billion. There's been a deadline on the claims for that, and I'll let our realty department explain more about the deadline. Cobell was a class action lawsuit brought about by Eloise Cobell, who was a member of the Blackfeet tribe, against the Secretary of Interior for mismanagement of funds. Um, we are at the point now where there's a, um, a settlement. There were two payouts. One was $1,000. You had to ha have been a landowner between September uh, of 85 and September 30th of 2009. If you were, you got a $1,000 payout. The second one was a base payment of $869, and you had to be a landowner between those dates and have an IIM account, an individual Indian money account. So this um, big push now is about trying to find those people who are one of those um, class action members who either they could not find or who had passed before they were able to get their payment. It's not actually a third payment. It's trying to find those people who are eligible. And the first original deadline was November 27th, 2017. And a lot of people were not able to um, get their documentation in. So it was extended until March 27th of 2018 to get um, all the documentation submitted so that they can get their, their payment. Um, they can go to www.indiantrust.com um, there's a map of the United States in the upper right hand corner. They click on that and click on the state of Oklahoma. They can search by last name, first name um, to see if any of their family or even their name is on that list. If they find that, they can. there's a form they can submit online right there. Um, it's going to ask for specifying information such as social security number, date of birth, date of death, and then their contact information, um, email, telephone number, address, and the Cobell um, group will get back with them on what they need to submit, such as possibly a death certificate. It may just be an address update. Maybe um, with the 911 addresses, they have an old route number and they need to update their address for a payment. And if you want any more information on that, you can go to www.indiantrust.com uh, and all of the information is on there as we said in the story. Uh, just go on there, look for your name uh, or, or just look around and find a little bit more on the Cobell case and really what it means uh, for landowners in that time frame there. Well, our last feature of the week is something that was given to us from Kevin Barnett here at Muskogee Media. He's one of our reporters, but he also does some video work. As I've explained before, Kevin sort of is our man on the street. He likes to get out amongst the people, talk to folks, find out what their story is. He'll see somebody, he'll find out that they're Creek, and then a story evolves from that. This instance took him to the coffee bunker up in Tulsa. It's a group where uh, a, a group of veterans that get together at this spot, have their coffee talk, a lot of fellowship there, and he met a Creek man, and it kind of blossomed into him going in and finding out what the coffee bunker was all about. The main mission of the Coffee Bunker is to help veterans to reintegrate back into uh, society and into their families, uh, whether that means uh, someone who has uh, lost their way uh, along the way or somebody who is just now getting leaving the military. And it's a camaraderie of it. You, you know it's a brotherhood of people, no matter what branch, when they served, 
how old they are or anything like that. It's just it's everybody coming together as as one just to help each other out. Um, the number one thing that a veteran wants to do when they've made it through somewhere that's hard in life is to reach back and help their brothers and sisters through the same through the same problems. And that's the advantage and it's connection. I prayed four years ago my wife died and I have no place to, you know, go or stuff like that. So, you know, really, uh, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of crazy for me because I'm, I'm used to having somebody with me. But when your spouse dies of 47 years, you know, you're about to go nuts. But this was the only place that helped me out. It's not something that, that's just exclusively ours. Um, this place belongs to the community. Okay, that'll do it for this week's episode of Native News Today. We want to thank all the great people out there that watch us each and every week here on Tulsa's CW19. Also, the folks that check us out online, we know you're out there. We certainly enjoy being able to give content each and every week to you folks that have subscribed to us. Hit the red button on our online channel there. It will give you all of our content on demand. As we upload it, you get a notification on your phone. Hey, uh, Jace put up a video, Jared put up a video, somebody's doing something at Muskogee Media, let's go watch it. We got a minute, let's watch it right here on our phone. You don't have to wait till Saturday. Uh, and so it's a great resource for us. It's a wonderful resource for all of the citizens outside of the area, outside of our viewing area. We know we got a lot of people over in Oklahoma City. Uh, we've got a lot of people outside of the state of Oklahoma that really like to keep up with what we're doing on Native News Today, and Muskogee Media specifically, and our video department. As we get ready for a lot of changes around here, we're doing some rebranding, some things like that. We'll have a lot of exciting things to, to share with you folks uh, coming up regarding that here in the very near future. You do, do not want to stay very far away uh, from what we're doing here at Muskogee Media. Lots of great things to share with you all about. And if you will go on our uh, social media sites, go to Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all of it, Muskogee Media. Uh, it's gonna give you everything that you uh, need as far as everything that's going on here that we're doing and covering the trot. We've got everything, uh, something for everybody. So if you go on there, check us out, please, I can't stress it enough, go on YouTube, go on our online channel, uh, subscribe, get all the uh, information that you can, all of the videos you can see. Like I said, they come to you right then and there on demand as we upload them. You get them on your tablet, on your phone. You can take us anywhere. Uh, if you're sitting in a, a health clinic and you just want to pass the time, watch some Muskogee Media on, on your uh, phone, your tablet, anything like that. It'll really help you get through and, and, and you know stay up to date on what we got going on here at The Nation. So uh, for Jared Moore and all of us here at Muskogee Media, all of the people who make this happen, make this show go, uh, we'll, we want to thank them. We'll see you guys next time.